All right. Looks like we're live. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Whimsy Creek. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get started with the main subject I wanted to talk about. And so today I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the ways we can kind of think about the environment and be a little bit conscious of the environment while paint pouring. Hey, Amber, how are you doing? Uh, welcome back. I hope you had a good week. Are you feeling better? I hope you're feeling better. Uh, you've had a, hopefully a couple of days of antibiotics, so you're hopefully feeling a little bit better. But yeah, I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the ways you can kind of be a little bit, uh, think about the environment and what your, your impact on the environment while you're paint pouring. Because uh, actually recently uh, I've seen a couple of posts and um, it kind of startled me. People, um, I, I had never even thought somebody would do this, but I've seen a couple of people paint pouring over their kitchen sink or in their bathtubs and just letting the paint flow down the, and that is just, that's so bad for our environment. That's so bad for your plumbing that you'll later have to pay for it and plumbing. So it's really, 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 really bad. And so it got me to thinking, and I actually have, sorry, I'm just backing the camera up just a little bit. Cause every time I even move the slightest, it, I hit it. But, um, I actually have a video and I'll try to, after I'm done here, link it in the description below. And it really goes into depth about all the ways that you can paint for and be really careful with your um, waste and stuff. Uh, I reuse all my cups. If you let your cups dry, you can peel the dried paint out. Uh, just the, you know, I use up all the, everything in it, but there's just a little bit left in there. Um, you can let it dry and you can peel that out. And it's much safer to, uh, I hate filling the landfill with any sort of waste, but it's much safer to um, get rid of your dried paint and throw your dried paint away than washing things out. You shouldn't really, if you can, uh, wash a lot down the sink. Oh, you are feeling better. But you thought you had the flu the other night. Bad headache still. I'm glad you're doing much better. Yeah, I, I've had a headache. You know, I get migraines at times, and this isn't a migraine, but it's just this dull, aching headache for now about a week and a half. And so it's not not like a debilitating headache or anything. It's just kind of this dull, just annoying headache. So that's been no fun. But um, so, yeah, I'm glad you're feeling a little bit better. Hopefully you'll just continue to get better and better and can enjoy the weekend. So, yeah, but um, so I, I do a little bit of um, I try to reuse my cups. I try to recycle any sort of uh, packaging we have here to mix paint in the packaging or to um, pour out of, you know, I do a lot of the yogurt cups or none of that is one time use for me. We, we recycle any sort of plastics and use it in the paint pouring or to hold up the canvases or any of that. And uh, I mean, I bought cups quite probably about three years ago and I'm on the same package of cups until I had to do a video just to have the packaging of the cups and I haven't even used the package of so it's pretty funny I usually have to buy cups just to even use do a video for and uh we don't use straws in our house so uh, a couple of friends and family have given me straws to use in the where the blown art uh, or else I use the aquarium tubing and that's a great way to kind of think about an environment because I try to not use straws but if if the family and friends all know kind of it's kind of a funny thing they all keep me um yogurt cups and pudding cups and you know all those sort of things straws if they use them in their household because I'll recycle all of them the uh yeah, people have been, I've, I've seen several posts, several people, and then the comments, people are like, that's a great idea of people that are paint pouring 
right over their sink or their bathtub. They'll put like just a grate over it to hold the canvas and then they'll pour it and let the paint just run down the drain. I'm just, oh, please, please, people don't do that for so many reasons. I mean, if, if you don't care about the environment, that's your own thing. I really wish you would. But um, if you don't care about the environment, that's your, you know, but please, at least you don't care about your plumbing and the amount of money it's going to cost you down the way. But uh, yeah, the stir sticks, the uh, popsicle sticks, I try to reuse all those. If you let it dry, your popsicle stick, you can set them aside and you can let them dry and you can reuse those. You can reuse all your cups many, many times. And you don't even have to peel all the paint out. A lot of times you'll see in my videos or my live streams, I'll have dried paint and you can use it up to like four times before you get kind of a thick layer of dried paint. Then you, you start, you need to peel it out. Now, I do keep all my paint mixed up in bottles. I've mixed my paint in creamer bottles, uh, Gatorade bottles, water bottles, uh, any sort of salad dressing, any sort of packaging. You can reuse all that. Wash it out really, really good because you don't want any risk of molds or anything in your paints. But you can reuse all that. Um, to, for my hands, I like to go ahead and just, um, I will... Uh, uh, do a, um, I keep like old uh, clothing and stuff. If it's nice clothing, I donate it and let somebody else reuse it. But, you know, with children and I used to have a daycare. So I had a lot of very soiled clothing, that uh, very stained clothing, not soiled. A lot of stained clothing to wear. Um, I could uh, just wipe my hands on those. I've been going through all those as my rags. Uh, lots of different ways. And even my gloves. Uh, after I do my gloves, so sometimes in my videos, I use gloves. Sometimes in my life, sometimes not always. I should try. It's better for your hands if you use gloves. But you can also um, wash those gloves off. You don't have to use them one time. They can. I have a little bit thicker, uh, better quality glove. And that just that lasts me a long, long, long time. You can wash those off many times. So hello to everybody coming in. I see there's a few people coming in and I hope everybody's doing well. I'm just kind of talking about uh, ways we can be a little bit more environmentally conscious with the paint pouring. And I never waste any paint. I try to, um, I've showed many different live streams and videos. I make jewelry out of the dried paint pieces. I've done a lot of collage work and you can collage the bits and pieces on. And so, yeah, uh, there's just so many ways. Try not to, you know, have any wasted paint and definitely, definitely don't pour over your kitchen sink or any, don't pour over your sink, your tubs. That's, it's just not a good idea. It's just not a good idea. Um, we just it's water is such an important commodity I and mean, we need to try to not uh, put a lot of toxins in our water and stuff this cat has come to sit with me <laughs> no she's fine she just came over to lay down <laughs> Yeah, oil. Or, I mean, if you're not going to, most people know that you don't put oil or bacon grease down your drain. So I would think most people would know you don't do put paint down your drain either. But um, I actually have seen many, many posts about it recently. And so that's what made me kind of prompted me to say this. And then also a lot of people saying that's a great idea. And I'm like, no, it's not a great idea. Please don't do that. So, yeah. You try to reuse your plastic straws. Yeah. Um, I try to reuse everything. I mean, cottage cheese containers, sour cream containers. I've got just uh, paint mixed in any kind of packaging. You can reuse all that stuff over and over again. Hey, H7, how are you doing? Yeah, it's Friday. Yay. How was your week? But yeah, I was just kind of talking a little bit about, um, and I said mainly what I wanted to say. If I think of stuff as we go along, I'll kind of say it. But this is kind of how the Fridays are going to be, is I'll have some sort of subject that I kind of want to talk about 
for the first 10, 15 minutes, but uh, that's about it. And then just random conversation after that. So yeah, and get to know everybody and see how you guys are all doing and stuff. But yeah, there's, there's, and I do have a video specifically on, and I go into detail on all the different ways you can be environmentally friendly with paint pouring. Uh, you can reuse everything, reuse your cups, reuse your stir sticks. If you use stir sticks, if you end up using uh, creamer bottles, bottles, water bottles, salad dressing bottles to mix your paint in, you don't have stir sticks very rarely if you're mixing. Uh, sometimes you have just a small amount of a color you'll want to mix and things like that. But uh, so, yeah, those are many different ways. Um, in that video, I talk about lots of different ways. Oh, and the stir sticks, you can reuse them over and over again if you set them out to dry. But then also if they sometimes get really pretty and you can actually use those as a bookmark or different things like that as well. Oh, yes, H7. Yes, yes. If I had a really, really good camera with a macro lens, oh my gosh, I... That's amazing. Yeah, I've seen that. There's there's several people that do that. The milk and the paint and the oil and the soap and it's it just comes alive and all the it's really cool. Yeah, they have to have a really good macro lens. If I did, I would oh, I would so do that. Cuz um a lot of people do that and then make prints and like will blow it up to really big and it get the really the awesome spot in it that just works perfectly. And then they blow that up to a big old print. There's a couple artists on Instagram that do that. That oh, amazing art. And then some of them even have some computer programs where they kind of uh, manipulate it even a little bit more. And it, I've seen some pretty cool stuff. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I will. I think I might have before, but um, and you know, it's not. You're not making. It's it's the the video you make, the pictures you make that actually is your art form out of it. It's nothing you can let dry. It's done usually in a basin or a bowl, and it doesn't dry. It's it's a very much a liquid and stuff, and so it, it doesn't dry. Your your art form is your video and your your pictures and the prints you can make from your pictures. So photographers really you know, can do a really good job there. Uh, yeah, I am happy to see a lot of pouring artists using their drips uh, for other stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, but I have seen quite a few posts lately, lately about going down the drain and it can, I was like, oh, no, no, no. We have to talk about this because I, I was shocked. Yeah, because the one picture I saw was a lot of wasted paint going right down the drain. And I mean, there's so many reasons. Why do you want to waste that much money on that much paint? Uh, and then if you, I mean, there's certain designs you have to do where you've got quite a bit of runoff, but that's when I, I poured on a canvas where all the runoff is going right down on another canvas, going on tiles, going on. Um, I take and then dip uh, the smaller tiles and make magnets. I have the necklaces and I make the little cabochons and the pendants and stuff. So there's many, many ways. So um, it's it's sad to see people. Um, and a lot of people use a lot of cups, a lot of cups, a lot of stir sticks. And that can all be reused over and over. I mean, many times. And I even at one time, I was going to use uh, mason jars and because uh, you can reuse those thousands of times. The reason I don't reuse do the mason jars is because the cups, you can kind of flex them. And if you flex them, you can peel that paint out better. With the mason jar, you have no flex and it's hard to peel out the paint. But I have done um, that as well, reusing things like that and glass jars. But reuse all packaging. I mean, there's so much packaging we go through that. Um, I mean, as a family, we have a lot of 
uh, cottage cheese and sour cream and, you know, yogurt and all those sort of things come in packaging that we reuse. She has to readjust, turn herself around. <laughs> oh, the th I'm not sure what it's exactly called. Um, how to make bubbles with acrylic paint. Is that what you searched on H7? So um, H7 says just to search that and you should be able to come up with it. But um, yeah, they take uh, paint and milk and soaps and oils. Um, it's all just household stuff. And you put it in a bowl and it makes some really cool designs. But again, it's, it's a big waste because it doesn't dry. You can't do anything after that. So you better make sure you're getting some really good shots of making it worthwhile. Because then it, there's nothing you can do with that substance afterwards because it's never going to dry. It doesn't dry at all. I wonder if those artists pour it down the sink. So... See, I, I really try to avoid activities that make waste as well. Me too. I feel horrible, horrible. So, and there, there can be a ton of waste in paint pouring. And I see it out there, but there are so many ways to go around it, you know. So, really, people need to be trying to do their, you know, what they can. But, uh, yeah, um, a lot of people use them as uh, their screen savers and their backgrounds on their phones. And a lot of graphic artists use it for um, uh, just all kinds of stuff. I'm starting to see it a little bit more and more out there. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that uh, milk and oil and soap and paint thing. So, but, yep, but things need to get done. It's it's a balancing act. You you definitely things need to get done, but you can definitely you know do our part. Do our part. Uh, Mike, being in the construction industry, you know he has to you know really think about different ways on his job sites that he can reuse and reduce and recycle and all those. You know it sounds really, but it but you got to do it. You have to. Resembles dipping Dots ice cream and melting gobstoppers, yeah. It's a little psychedelic and stuff, and it's really neat because they just the paint. Um, it comes, it almost just it swirls and makes these spheres, and some come together, and some pop and come off and make different spheres, and they just and then some more pop up from underneath, and it's really a neat thing to see. And um, some people use acrylic paints and then some people drip like a little bit of the inks into it. And then watching those inks kind of, they'll get like dendrites to it, through it. And it, it makes some amazing effects. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And you can, it's one thing, it's mesmerizing. You can just get lost watching those for a while. Sometimes, um, a lot of times I'll find things like that um, to just turn on in the background. I have a little, um, it's, I don't know, I hope as well as that TV mic that's in the uh, dining room. But it's it's just, I mean, it's like the size of a laptop screen. It's a very small screen. And uh, I'll turn things like that on as just like uh, uh, work, you know, to have in the background pretty swirling paint and art. And have it on the background as I'm painting. It's pretty good inspiration and stuff. And I'll see color combinations and stuff. And I'm like, ooh, I like how those colors worked well. Or, you know, or even I'll see color combinations. Oh, I don't know. I don't like those, you know. And it makes me think about my own art as well. Yeah, Mike tries to be careful about his waste at work. We all have to do it. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And it's the construction field, a lot of you see so much waste, so much waste. And thankfully, you know, my, we don't we have our own business. So Mike's his own boss and can, you know, kind of steer things towards not being so wasteful and using better products that are, you know, a little bit greener and things like that.
Yeah, you'll have to ch show your mom. She's like things like that. She likes to try things like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the, the thing that's kept me from doing it is you don't have an end result product because it never does dry. It's more something usually you want to um, have like a macro lens that it will really get really good uh, close up shots. But uh, I never know. It depends on the quality, you know, of camera you have. You might be able to get really good shots. Because uh, it, it's, uh, it's definitely, and it goes for a little while. Because I've seen the videos that it, it swirls, you know, and does and pops different colors. And it's really kind of neat. It's really mesmerizing. It's a reminder that it's about the journey, not the destination. I'm huge on quotes. I, mean, I think you can actually see some of the quote signs and stuff. I have quotes all over my house and I actually have that quote uh, around. See, I have lots of quotes. Quotes, quotes, quotes. There's all my bottles I've been uh, fixing, paint, uh, the paint. Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Um, his paint he uses, he does, he does. It's a huge selling point. And being in the Northwest, um, I think it really, you know, we're kind of hippie, you know, we're granola up here. And so uh, a lot of people are tend to be a little bit more conscious of the uh, uh, kind of the environment up here. Hey, Robert, how are you doing? Do you have a good week? I hope you had a good week. Hey, artsy fartsy lovers, how are you doing? Uh, I hope you had a good week as well. And um, artsy fartsy lovers, the other day I did that video and it was on the jewelry box and stuff. And then I, you had the question about how will it open? Uh, did I answer your question? Because after that, I didn't really, um, I thought about, you know, sometimes you, you make, you comment back and then you're like, I hope that's what they were asking. Maybe I misunderstood the question. I hope I answered your question, what you were asking. Uh, do I incorporate any quotes into my art? I do. I'm trying to do a little bit more, get a little bit more comfortable with my uh, lettering and stuff. I just recently did a big collab with um, a lot of artists here on YouTube. Uh, I'm not sure if any of the artists, other artists are in on that one, but it was done by Artsy Studios and it was the worldwide sketchbook tour. And so everybody, we all sent around a sketchbook and Dina Tollison, Artfully Yours by Diana, a bunch of people did that one. And I think it's still going. It's going worldwide. I sent it off to One Mighty R was the next one after me. And on my, so everybody did a page. And it was uh, Love Not Hate was the theme of it. And so my page was a paint poured background with blues, a bunch of blues. And then I put over the top, um, love always wins was my page. And so I painted the quote or not, it's not really a quote. It's just kind of, but I painted love always wins across the top of the pour. And I used co uh, the color shift paint. Uh, and so it looked really cool over the top of a pour because you could still, it was kind of translucent. You could still see the pour underneath but you could move it and um, because it's color shifting, uh, it was, uh, I used a color shifting pink on the blue and it, it turned out pretty good. But, um, and I didn't get any close up pictures of it. I got kind of a picture of me holding it because uh, that's what Artsy Studios wanted, a picture, of, it was part of the whole collab thing. But yeah, let me get caught up with, uh, okay, yeah. Um, here, I can. Mike, can you grab me something? But um, I'll show you some of my other um ones I've done. Could you grab me a jewelry box with an opening lid? Uh, so I can show you what what it is. But um, so uh, yeah, I just tape everything off, and then once it's dry, I take everything off. 
And you can say hi too if you would like. Hi too. <laughs> hi too. <laughs> But uh, so like this is one that I've done. So they have a drawer and that other one was a little bit of a bigger one. And so it has a thing that uh, comes out a top, but I don't want to show the mirror. Show. But so it just, the top comes up. So it just, it just, but um, so I tape everything off. And then once I'm all done with pouring the top, so I'll paint pour on the top and paint pour on the drawer. And so once I'm done, then I take all the paper off and then I just paint the sides, you know, a basic color. I have a bunch of them on my, um, I'll just sit next to me. Anything else? No, but if you want to say hi, you can, but okay. they said hello. They're all saying hello. <laughs> yes, love always does win. But yeah, it was one of those things where I wasn't really sure if um, I understood your question. So I wasn't even sure if I under I answered you properly. So I'm glad you were in here so I could show you. And that's how they open. And then it has a mirror. It has a mirror underneath. So yeah, I have those ones. And then I have ones that are more like a little tabletop dresser. It's still a jewelry box, but it doesn't have the flip open it doesn't have a mirror but it does have um drawers it looks like just like a dresser but it's tabletop bunch of them on my etsy so yeah and i'm getting i'm starting to get ready for the bazaar season so uh, i have a lot of craft sales and bazaars they're very big in our area i know a lot of areas um not all areas have them are bazaars and craft fairs a big thing in your area I'm curious if you guys uh, know. And even even uh, Robert and all you guys, H7. Uh, well, H7, I don't know if you know if, are they in your area where you are now? You might not know that being new to that area, but you might already. Or was they a uh, thing in Maine when you were there? Your town is too much art. Um, mine is in a way, but it's, um, I live very, very close to Portland. So Portland is Portland, Oregon. Uh, Portland, Oregon is very artsy. So uh, we kind of do, we have kind of a trickle effect across the river from kind of Portland artsy stuff. But it's such a big area that I think we, I mean, we got enough room for everyone and all the art. Yeah, you have a lot of arts and crafts uh, stuff out there, bazaars and stuff. Awesome. Oh, 10,000 people, 75 galleries to 10,000 people. That is a pretty saturated. Um, that's awesome. Is it a large variety of different artists? Or does there seem to be um, a concentration of certain mediums or something? Or is there a pretty large... Um, just all variety of different art forms and art. Oh, you're not too, the, it doesn't, the area doesn't seem to be too artistic there, especially compared to Maine. So Maine was pretty artistic, had a lot of um, different like art sales and art. Um, we have a lot of the holiday bazaars and then we have a lot of art sales. And so I have a lot near me. So I have Portland, Oregon. I do have a lot. And then over um, like the coast, I'm pretty close to the coast. So at the coast has a lot of galleries and art stuff going on. And <laughs> you call it hippie town. I love Portland though. I love living near Portland. I I'm, kind of a hippie at heart too. I don't care. That's all right. But uh, yeah, uh, Portland definitely is kind of a hippie town and stuff. But and, and if you've seen Portlandia, it's somewhat accurate. There are some things they kind of exaggerate, you know, to make the show, but it's pretty accurate. <laughs> oh, an art college there too. That's awesome. All kinds of art from miniatures to huge sculpture. That is awesome. Awesome. And a lot of galleries. Oh, okay. All right. 
Hey, Crafty Ladybug, how are you doing? And you live in a pretty artsy area. Tucson is a big art town. Yeah, yeah. We were just talking about that. Uh, so here coming up with the holidays, I'm starting to gear up for that. Gear up for all the bazaars and art sales and stuff. It's starting to be crunch time. Uh, actually, uh, I have less than a month at this point because October 26th will be my first one of the season. Unless I find another one. I've actually seen one for the weekend prior to that I was kind of interested in. It's actually an Oktoberfest that is the weekend prior to that I'm thinking about. But we'll see. Uh, I I, I want to do all the sales, but I got to kind of slow down and try to do the proper amount. <laughs> Yeah, you have craft sales all over. That's awesome. So um, it sounds like everyone, um, so H7, uh, you don't have a lot of uh, artsy stuff there compared to Maine, but have you been able to uh, kind of investigate and see what you do have? Do you have um, some arts and crafts and things like that around? So we don't have much of a lag today. This is kind of nice. Sometimes I never know how much lag we have between what I say, but you guys are answering me pretty quickly. Not too much lag. But so you haven't explored too much. Yeah. I mean, everything's so new. Some some murals, some downtown Main Street. That is awesome. Um, I uh, follow a few people on mainly on Instagram that do murals. Oh my God, some amazing murals. But the sad thing about a lot of them is, you know, they, um, every year or every season, they paint over that beautiful artwork and the next artist comes in and does their mural and stuff. But I mean, they're all together and a lot of them paint together, you know, the next one and stuff. But it's just sad to see the one art get covered up. But um, I follow an artist. Uh, he's got an Instagram and YouTube, but 1000. I love his bright, bold colors. And uh, he's got some really interesting characters and stuff he does. But 1000, he's a pretty cool artist. And he's out of Seattle, but he mainly does murals. But yeah, I live pretty close to, I mean, just right across the uh, river. We could say across the, the, across the bridge, across the river from uh, Portland, Oregon. So we kind of have a trickle effect over here. But then I can easily also go just a half hour and be in major artsy town. And there is lots and lots of galleries and boutiques and things over uh, in Portland. Oh, you, you're familiar with Ten Hundred Ten Hun. Yeah, he's he's pretty good. Uh, I think his Instagram is Ten Hun and his uh, YouTube is Ten Hundred. I, I think is how it is. But um, so yeah, he's he's pretty awesome, and he has an art course out right now. I think today is the last day, maybe for his art course. But I have I didn't even look at pricing or anything. I'm not in a position to do that right now. But have I gone to statics? No, what is that? Tell me about that. Uh, that sounds neat. But yeah, uh, I, I like to check out all the murals and, uh, on, on vicariously online on Instagram. And um, I'm a couple hours away. Uh, so no, I didn't know that's the name of his shop. I do see his shop in his Instagram stories and his, uh, YouTube channel, but I didn't realize that was the name of it. Oh, I wish, I wish he has really awesome merchandise, t-shirts and all kinds of stuff done up in his, his, uh, artsy stuff, but, um, uh, he's up in Seattle. And so we're about four hours, I think. Mike, Mike's might be a little bit more accurate, but I think we're about four hours from Seattle. So yeah, pretty close, not too far. Oh, Philadelphia, it's a pretty artistic place, yeah. That's awesome. But actually, that's one of the things I do wanna do. Um, we are gonna go to Seattle for, uh, at some point uh, this winter. I wanna January, February, uh, 
So Mike says about three hours. If traffic is good, about three hours. So um, Seattle traffic can be a little bit tough. So three to four hours, depending on traffic. But um, there's a bunch of places. There's a huge art galleries in Seattle. And so I'll put that, I'll put statics on my list because definitely would love to check that out. But um, I'm actually as close as we are to Seattle and I've been all over our state. If uh, you're talking about uh, some sort of outdoor place, I've been there. But Seattle, I've only been there once or twice and not really like I've driven through. And then I went as when I was like four. So not when I, I don't remember Seattle much. So that's something like on the bucket list for this winter. I have a ton of it because I'm artsy and foodie. Seattle is the artsy foodie, like, and musical, really. I mean, it's an amazing city. And I've been a lot to like just the suburbs of Seattle, but not into the main Seattle, a lot of the cool places. So, yeah, Mike used to work a lot in Seattle. He used to work a lot out of town. And so um, that's why we're thankful he no longer <laughs> works for that company. But um, yeah, he uh, used to have to go work a lot in Seattle because the construction, there's a lot going on up there. Hey, Creations by Baby Doll, welcome. How are you doing? I hope you've had a great week. Oh, you hope to go someday? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll be 40. So that's I actually was talking about possibly um, in, in a few months, I'll be 40. So possibly a 40th birthday trip. I'm not sure. We were kind of loosely talking about it right now. Oh, Seattle's your favorite city. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, you're very artsy and like that sort of. It's it's Austin. Uh, it's look, I'm reading yours and saying something. You, I'm reading often and trying to say awesome, but I'm mixing it all together. But yes, uh, Seattle is awesome, awesome, amazing art, amazing music comes out of Seattle. It's awesome. But uh, I, that's awesome. You've been there often. I have not. <laughs> so, yeah. But if you guys are um, just coming in and you're wondering about the title, I did talk about the begin at the beginning of the live stream. And I was just talking about I've seen several paint pouring artists doing their paint pouring over the kitchen sink, over the sink or in their bathtub and letting paint just drain down the sink. So I was just kind of mentioning, please, please be conscious of the environment. And I discussed different specific ways we can be conscious of the environment with paint pouring and reusing, which artsy fartsy lovers, I have noticed in her videos and commented on her videos, she re reuses her cups. And that is so awesome to see people doing. And so I do have videos, uh, specific, uh, videos specifically on ways to be environmentally safe when paint pouring. But I did talk about uh, the first 10 minutes of this live stream. It was that. So now we're just kind of chatting and seeing how everybody's doing and stuff. But the first 10 minutes was um, more about the environment and paint pouring and how we can be a little bit conscious with our art and with everything, with our packaging and everything. Just be uh, uh, as conscious as you can about what we're using and waste and stuff like that. It's very important. So, hey, drawing for beginners. Thank you for coming in. Welcome. How are you doing? Everybody saying hello to everybody. That's awesome. Awesome. I hope, I think everybody kind of somewhat knows each other. Oh, hello, Lady Bees Urbanstead. How are you doing? Welcome. I hope you're doing well. So yeah, it's awesome to see everybody coming in, saying hi and everything. So. Oh, okay, it's your first time here. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, I have a paint pouring channel or we do a lot of art and stuff on this channel. And on Tuesdays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time is when I do my live streams. And on Tuesday's live streams, you'll be seeing me live painting, uh, doing the paint 
pouring with fluid acrylics. And then Fridays is I'm doing face to face and we'll kind of loosely have a subject we're talking about. I usually talk uh, first 10, 15 minutes, of, try to stay with the subject. And then we just get chatting for the rest of it. All right. Awesome. Awesome. You've been sub for a little while, but you just clicked the bell. Well, thank you. Awesome. Yes, that's awesome. Yes, welcome everybody. Thank you, Katie. Or Crafty Ladybug. I think some people might get confused if I say Katie because uh, Crafty Ladybug. And those that are new here, my name is Megan. Just to introduce myself, my name is Megan. And uh, I've been doing the paint pouring for several years now. And I'm almost coming up on a year on my channel. So October 7th will be my first year uh, on the channel. So I'm trying to come up with something fun to do. I'm not sure if exactly on October 7th, but within that week, some sort of one year celebration or something. <laughs> you can call me Katie. Okay, I just don't know. I know I can call you Katie, but I just don't know if it confuses other people that might not know who I'm talking to. So... Yeah, don't tell anybody what Mike the Greek's name is. Nobody. Don't tell anyone, guys. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Creations by Baby Doll. Yeah, it's been, it's a lot of work. It's crazy, but uh, it's been a great year. It's been an awesome year. But October 7th was my first video that I posted, October 7th of 2018. And I've gotten over 300 videos in less than a year. So. Or your, yeah, or your nationality. Do not tell anybody, guys. We can't tell anybody. Not about that Mike the Greek. <laughs> he was in here. Just I said to say hello a little bit ago for those just coming in. He did a real quick hi, but uh, he's a little shy. Wouldn't really. Maybe we'll talk him into being on, on the camera one of these days. This cat is sound asleep. She is like dreaming in my lap. <laughs> that was, that's just going to be probably the new Friday thing. She'll come to, around and just lay and sleep the whole live stream. That'll probably be her regular live, the regular Friday routine. I can't even talk now, guys. So, yeah. So what do you guys got planned? Anybody have any plans for this weekend? What do you guys got going on? Um, we are going to go get some uh, mushrooms. So uh, Mike had went last weekend and got a bunch of uh, chanterelles for us, white chanterelles and yellow chanterelles. And he did get just a small amount of chicken of the woods. Chicken of the woods, you don't really want to take, um, they primarily grow up on stumps and stuff. And so you don't want to take the whole thing because it'll continue growing throughout the season. So he just took that outer rim of it. It was real tasty, awesome. Chicken of the woods is my favorite mushroom. And um, so we know now where that is. If nobody else has found it, we can go back up to that same mushroom there's actually several I think about four or five chicken of the woods he found um and we can trim off another little bit but we have to wait and see but this weekend is kind of we're going got to get up there to the uh, mushrooms because we might get our first frost on Sunday or Monday and so if we get our first frost then our mushroom season kind of ends so uh we we like to we've made soups this week, uh, stroganoffs, like a mushroom gravy thing over egg noodles, uh, mushrooms and uh, scrambled eggs. <laughs> We've had a lot of mushrooms this week. So I think the ones that we get this weekend, we might want to, um, we can, we have a dehydrator or sometimes I will cook them up and then freeze them cooked. So, yeah, we love wild mushrooms here, too. We're a big, uh, even my kids can ID mushrooms now. Uh, we, we can ID most of our local mushrooms. Definitely haven't been into other areas to know mushrooms, but 
Uh, we, we mainly do the fall mushrooms. We don't really do too much morel hunting. Um, we might this year. Last year was a huge year for morels. But this year, our fall mushrooms, uh, the chanterelles, huge bumper crop. I mean, we got a lot when Mike went out. Yeah, you don't want the uh, the chicken of the woods if they're in a cedar stump. You no, 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 no. You don't eat mushrooms when they're growing out of cedar. But um, if it's a different type of tree, you can yes, a pine tree or any of those, perfectly fine. But you never want to eat mushrooms if they're growing out of a cedar stump. You get a lot of the, I believe it's the tannins in the cedar will go into the mushroom. You felt the fungus bite from me. <laughs> I don't know if that's is that good one. It's good thing, bad thing. <laughs> uh, yes, we had to take a break yesterday uh, from mushrooms. We I we had mushrooms all week, so but in different ways and stuff. But uh, not yesterday. Um, artsy fartsy lovers, what part of the country are you in? Ah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm mainly familiar with our mushrooms we have in the Northwest, in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, some oyster mushrooms. Awesome. And I grew oyster mushrooms one year. We got a great harvest, but they're supposed to continue growing. And we got one good harvest, and I didn't cut it back then. I don't think too much because you want to leave it to still grow. Um, but it didn't grow additionally after that. One of those little mushroom kits. We had real good luck with it at first, but it just didn't continue. So, cedar essential oil is not good to take internally, probably for the same reasons. I believe it's the tannins. Oh, yes, I knew that. As soon as you said St. Augustine, Florida, I knew that. I knew that. It just took me a minute. But, um, yeah, yeah, I think you guys do have a lot of mushrooms down there, but they're completely, I don't know those ones at all. So. Did I rehydrate it? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I did. I honestly think because then later we started getting a little bit of molds growing in it. So I'm not sure I need to check into maybe because I used to use, I used my tap water. I'm not sure if that was the issue. I might have to get um, bottled water. And, but um, yeah, it grew perfect at first, but it was one of those oyster mushroom kits. They're just like a little um, kind of a box. You peel off the side and they grow out the side of the box thing. And um, after that first harvest of them, it just didn't didn't grow and i use tap water and our tap water is doo-doo <laughs> it is so we live in a community and they have um a holding tank for the water we have city water but they have a whole or no we're on a, are we on a well yeah we are on a well for the whole community which that's absolutely insane we need to go to city water but they have a huge holding tank and i honestly think that's the issue is the holding tank for the water but it's literally doo-doo but we don't use our water and and when we had the mushroom growing kit was several years ago before we've researched our water and really knew how bad it was um yeah it's the the health department has tested it and it's it's bad it We've gotten certified letters from the health department. Let's just say that it's now on a regular um, testing from them. They come out here quite often and test it. It's a huge issue. Well, so yeah, it's it's horrible. Yeah, it tests positive for um, coliform, and they constantly chlorinate, like highly chlorinate it. It smells bad. But um, we've stopped. We can't give it to our pets. We don't drink it. We don't cook with I mean, nothing. Uh, we still, I mean, it's, it's bad. But I don't know. Someday we'll get moved from here. <laughs> Hopefully someday. Because we bought this house to actually, it's, it's a manufactured home. And uh, we bought it to move it to a property. And the zoning changed. So it was, so we didn't move. We didn't buy this house to actually stay here. <laughs> So we got to figure out we're having some issues with some zoning. 
So, yeah, but this cat is sound asleep. Yeah, um, we either boil the water before using on plants or we we have um, bottles, uh, like the big refillable, big five-gallon bottles we use a lot. So we have to bring in water. But thankfully, um, we have a lot of people around us that are on really good water. So we can get it from them and different sources. So, yeah. But. So I think I probably will be probably getting off of here. I need to finish up with a few things around here. And then. Um, I actually need to go to the store. Um, I'm going to go to FedEx and UPS to see what size boxes they have because I need to ship some of my larger paintings. Uh, H7, I think I'm going to be, I'll message you here after this because I'm, I'm, about, I'm ready to ship your painting. Your painting is ready. It's, it's all perfectly dried and stuff. So I have a couple questions for you. So I will, I'll message you after this. But yeah, I've got to go get a box big enough for that one and a couple other ones I have to ship. Yeah, definitely research the mushrooms around there. Um, there's actually uh, a lot of areas have like mushroom hunting groups and you can go out and get some firsthand knowledge from people that really have years and years of experience specific to your area. And I think it's really coming back a lot more popular um, again. So I bet you your area might have a group like that. I know here in the Portland area, we have several groups like that. And then there's the groups like, we don't show people where our special, you know, mushroom hunting area is. So uh, there's definitely people that will not show you their area. And then there's people that are like, educate you, will show you. But um, yeah, there's usually a lot of local um, uh, guides and stuff. Uh, we we can get as like forest service. They have a lot of local guides with pictures that tell us. Definitely. Oh, I wish we could get a Berkey water filter. The price of those things, though. Oh, we. I definitely. My sister has a Berkey water filter, and she lives with perfectly good water. But I mean, everyone could probably use one of those. Uh, Berkey water filters are like the the ultimate water filter they're awesome awesome we definitely could use one of those but yeah i wish but, hey your average girl i'm only gonna be on here a couple more minutes but we have been chatting my new um live stream schedule is nine o'clock on tuesdays and fridays so nine o'clock pacific standard times tuesdays and fridays so um, I, I am kind of saying somewhat saying my goodbyes and getting off of here. I've been on here now 52 minutes. So, um, but yeah, what's every, anybody else uh, got any plans for this weekend? Do anything this weekend? Oh, thank you. The rose gold pour. That one has already been claimed. <laughs> so that one. Uh, th you know, not often do my paintings get claimed before they're even dry, but that that one did. That one got claimed already. Uh, I was happy how that how that one turned out. Thank you, thank you. And that's actually over the top of a pour that uh, was a little bit uh, messed up. So I was super happy with the way it turned out. Your plans are being an emotional wreck. I was an emotional wreck an hour ago. So that's our two hours ago, an hour before. So that's okay. We've had an emotional time here at our house. But you're going to be diamond painting this weekend. Um, it's been kind of an emotional time here at our house because um, last night uh, my daughter's hamster passed away. And so like I've actually talked about it a couple of live streams. We knew that was coming because he's three and a half. And that is just the life expectancy, but it's still, it's really sad and it's really hard, you know, and it was, it was tough last night and a tough morning and, and I know it's a hamster, but it's, 
we were close. That little guy was cute. We really had a good time. He was, and he, you know, when it's your children and stuff, it's hard to see them be so crushed and stuff. So it, it was a difficult evening for us, definitely. So it makes you hold your pets and cherish your pets and stuff for sure. But so, yeah, we kind of had an emotional evening and morning and rough start to get off to school and stuff. Tokyo banana, banana cream filled sponge cakes. Hmm. And so what, explain more, explain more. I, I'm, I love baking. I bake all the time. But uh, so what's a Tokyo banana? So uh, that sounds good, though. That sounds real good. Uh, I was thinking about making, because uh, I have a tub of sour cream that needs to be used up. So I was thinking about making like old fashioned uh, sugar cookies, the really soft sugar cookies that have the frosting. I was thinking about making some of those. They might be good to have a cookie walking around looking for the mushrooms. You've been to jo Japan. Oh my gosh, I lately, Mike's been laughing at me, but I have become so obsessed with Japan. Oh my God, I cannot, I, I love Japan. I've been devouring all kinds of Japan, uh, YouTube and food, uh, watching food stuff. And I just adore Japan right now. I don't know. I go through these phases where I got to learn everything I can about a certain culture or a certain something. And lately it's been Japan. <laughs> So, oh, I didn't know you've been. I think everybody should go, yes. Now people are wanting that recipe. <laughs> are you giving me a bite like that? Oh, okay. Japanese stuff channel. Okay. I watch um Japanese Go. There's a couple of them that are Japan. Well, they call them J vloggers. That they're if they're J Japanese vloggers. Ah, uh, oh, I okay, yeah. In the Navy, my dad also he was uh, stationed there for a little bit in the '60s. I should have known that. Yeah, it would have been in the Navy. But it's okay. He's been obsessed with coins. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, yeah, you disappeared from her live stream. Oh, yeah, family over that. Yeah. So passion for pets. Hey, how are you doing? I'm not I didn't see you for a quick second. Um, I'm not sure if you came in just as I said it. But um, uh, last night, our hamster passed away. So it's been kind of an emotional. Uh, so the hamster would have been four in April. So the, the hamster is three and a half. So it's just, it was, we knew it was coming and stuff, but it was super sad. And we found him just as he was kind of the last few breaths. Mike held him as, so it was, it was a rough evening. It was truly a rough evening especially with kids, you know, they're teens, but it, you know, death, it's hard. Oh, you had to go stock Amazon for a wedding outfit? Are you going to a wedding soon? Yeah, he lived a great life. Well, we gave him a lot of, a lot of love and a lot of fresh fruit, fruit and a lot of fresh food and, so um, he was well taken care of, well loved. But, uh, and we got him super young. He was about two months old when we got him. He was a little ornery little shit. Uh, he biting us all, but uh, he was super playful and super friendly. He could be held and played with towards the last year or so. Well, no, no, last two years. So, yeah, they don't. So we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. Because he lived a long time. I use uh, usually painter's tape uh, or just masking tape. Uh, my husband's a painter, so we usually have a lot of uh, like the blue painter's tape or just masking tape. 
Um, but that's usually what I use for like my um, my jewelry boxes and stuff. Renfest themed in a state park. Awesome, awesome. Mike and I got married in a park. I love outdoor weddings. We got we had a beautiful wedding in the park. Um. Yeah, sometimes that happens when you order online. It's so hit and miss with ordering stuff online. Sometimes it's, you know, you get great stuff, and sometimes it's you get cheap fabric. It's so hit and miss, it's hard. Well, I hope you're able to find something else that'll work out for them. Yeah, Mike's got all the tips on the tape. He he knows which tip which tape and stuff like that. Oh, the youngest little mouse did, didn't make it. Oh, I'm sorry. So, um, did you get more? Because I I had watched on a live stream and you had just mice that were uh they they didn't have any little babies and then all of a sudden you had these babies that were in different you know uh you had little different stages of babies did you get more babies where did these babies come from because i know there was enough time for her to have babies because i think she's pregnant right now so where did these baby mice come from hey mr doughboy how are you doing how are you doing? And how's your wife? I've been thinking about you guys. I, I hope you're well. 3M2020 is the best. Mike's saying that is the best tape. He likes to use the 3M2020. All right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Still in the hospital. Oh, well, I hope you're taking care of yourself because I know that can be very hard on the both of you. Uh, that is no good. Well, I hope things improving and things are getting a little better. Oh, okay. So you went and got their own babies. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I was, I, I, I saw when you very first brought them home and there was no babies and you said they had had some at work. And then I saw a couple of days later and all of a sudden they had different stages of babies. And I thought, in a second, here, where did these come from? Oh, okay. Okay. Four fuzzies. Okay. Pregnant again. You're going to have just, it's going to be like rabbits around there. But, and, uh, that's what you wanted because there's a shortage. So, yeah, many, many prayers for Mr. Doughboy and his wife for sure. Definitely been in our thoughts and prayers for sure. And Mike was in over at Silver Giveaways and they were, and Mr. Doughboy was there. I think it was Silver Giveaways, I'm pretty sure. They watch, uh, they do Coin Channel. And uh, I think they were giving away a camera or something. Oh, you're going to do a video on guess how many babies she's going to have. Well, I don't know. What is the average? What is the average amount for a um, mouse? I don't even know. Yeah. Keeping you in our thoughts and prayers for sure. For sure. One to 14. Oh, my gosh. 14. Could you imagine that? Wow. She's so little to have 14. Oh, so she last one, six. Yeah, I would say six to eight, somewhere in there. Wow, I never knew that. But I guess that, I mean, if mice, there's a, you know. They populate pretty fast. Go with 10. So you guys will have to follow Passion for Pets. She uh, sounds like she's going to do a video and you can guess the amount. <laughs> so, all right. 
they're like guppies. Oh my God. We went down the guppy. I kind of want to do guppies again though. I'm ready for guppies again. But um, we did guppies and every one of our friends, family, everyone around us had guppies because we had so many guppies at one point. Uh, guppy fish. But yeah, I think they're fun. They're so pretty too. I want to do them again. I want guppies again. But then it's what do you do with all those, you know, so about 20 days. Wow. Crazy. They can really pop those out. Oh, it's nuts. So what, uh, if for those that aren't familiar, she, she works at pet store and they have a shortage on, uh, the, uh, feeder mice. And so she's uh, going to raise some to help out with that shortage. She's big and around already. Yeah, that's what I was noticing. Oh, you have sugar gliders. That is awesome. They only have one to two joys. Um, we actually almost got a sugar glider. We were offered a sugar glider, um, but we actually passed it up. I didn't have the room for a sugar glider at that time. But um, I, I regret that. I, I wish I would have just made room. But uh, yeah, they're super, super cool. Um, some states, I think they're actually illegal because I think they might be illegal in our state because there was something about um, the per people we had we knew weren't supposed to have it, and then they were trying to get rid of it, and I passed I passed it up. But yeah, so all right, it's it's I've been about fifteen minutes since I said I was actually gonna be getting going, so uh, I need to get to. Uh, I'm not sure they just put a new FedEx store. So I'm going to see if they have the boxes I need. If not, we'll need to go to the UPS store. But uh, I got to go run and get some boxes and get some paintings all packaged up so I can get them shipped off. So, Oh, you have a couple of sugar gliders there at work? Oh, they're super sensitive to chemicals. All right, huh? You need to claim before you have company again. I need to do that too. Me too. I got to do runs and errands and then that's what I'll be doing. Oh, you yeah. Sometimes with the animals that only have one or two, you don't know when they're pregnant and they can just show up one day. Oh, that's quite a surprise. That would be a surprise. That would be. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out and chatting with me. And uh, it's so awesome. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And you guys have an awesome, awesome weekend. And I will be back on on Tuesday at 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time if I can get it out and talk. I'm kind of stumbling on my words today. So, uh, yeah, I research any pet you get anything we do ultimate research on any pet you get before you get it but do your research if you uh get a sugar glider for sure but do your research on all pets before you get them and that's the one thing we passed up on the sugar sugar glider i didn't know very much about it and so i just didn't know how to take care of it properly so we passed up on it so all right guys this cat is drooling on me oh gross <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I have a great weekend and it was so awesome chatting with you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. All right. Bye bye.